Greetings, everyone. This is Rick Caldwell with Caldwell Apologetics. Want to do a quick uh, video review to a Q&A session. Actually, one specific question that was asked uh, when Michael Eric Dyson, he was um, actually doing a Bible study at uh, Alfred Street Baptist Church a few days ago, and a question was asked about social justice and the gospel. And so let's take a look at that together and be edified and learn together. Okay. Yeah. So my question was, yeah. as far as social justice, so what we have is that with your evangelicals, mm -hmm. the social justice piece is what has been the nail in the coffin for us. Mm -hmm. What they're using is that is to say, that has been the flag that they're waving around to say that it's, it's another form of socialism mm -hmm. and to keep us down. Right. So I need to know, um, because I don't see them as two separate planes. Sure. Um, but so how, how do you address that mm -hmm. in different arenas? Yes, ma'am, a oh, great point. And thank you so much for, for, for dropping us. Are you an attorney? You are? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Leave your number, a lot of us need some help. Um, so, the notion that what we could say, that we can say something not to offend the other side, is illusory. Big problem, starting off with a big problem in his response because he completely dismisses the warrant or foundation for any complaint that the quote unquote other side has. We have yet to hear that defined. She started her question by saying evangelicals. And I know even know that that term can be a little vague, especially in our society now. But um, I digress. The point is, is that um, he, he just completely dismisses the argument saying, well, and you're going to see as he continues that it's just they just like to argue. They're just being argumentative for the sake of being argumentative. They, this other side and and not and not taking seriously the his audience and in some way actually patronizing his audience because uh, he's basically pandering to fear, uh, fear mongering here, and he's not allowing his audience to actually understand what the true issues are, why objections are even being raised. You know, oftentimes objections are raised because there are valid reasons for why those objections are being raised. It's just not someone being argumentative or just being defensive or just being mean spirited because they're part of this other side group. And I, and I, and I caution people for just uh, having knee jerk reactions and not taking seriously uh, the, the, uh, the perspectives that are being raised, the, uh, the things that are being addressed and just brushing them off as just someone purely being argumentative. Let's continue. Cause if you ain't a communist, you a socialist or you're too liberal, or you're too black, or you're too black nationalist, or you're too feminist, or you're too queer, you sometimes say queer, you, there ain't no satisfaction. Yeah. Now, this is, this is really interesting because he goes on, he, he enumerates to his list, none of this has to do with anything with the gospel, has zero to do with the gospel. He's even naming categories that uh, would be in the category of sin, um, nothing to do with the gospel here, okay? And he's bringing up all of these different groups, right? And it speaks to uh, this whole language of intersection uh, sexuality, sectionality, right? Uh, where you're putting people in different groups and based on the combination of groups that you're in determines how oppressed you are. You're in a more oppressed group if you're like black, gay, and poor, all right? Then you're really oppressed, right? If you're black, gay, poor, and uneducated, then you're like in a super oppressed group. You see, so it, it's about defining these groups, and we're not really even looking at the Bible. We're looking at these sociological constructs that have been foisted onto uh, the church and has been quite popular even in the, the Christian church community. So then he starts talking about they're they're never satisfied. Well. I, I would say a little bit, this is a bit of projection because you often hear that narrative for a lot of the social justice warriors who come back and always seem to come up with a new grievance, a new 
uh, privation. There's never enough apologies that can be done, never enough resources that can come to bear. And it seems like there, there's not any end in sight. So I think he should fairly look at what those in his camp have been uh, touting, have been promoting, have been presenting. And he will probably find that the case is that you, he's looking at a group that seems not to be satisfied at all with anything that's brought to the table. You got to know what you are and know who you are. Now, we have a right to fight among ourselves, as pro if ourselves includes progressives and liberals, right? AOC and the squad, right? Ilhan Omar, uh, Ayanna Presley, uh, uh, Congresswoman Talib, right? In, um, in, from Michigan. Those, uh, along with many others, they have a right to express, they were duly elected. Now, where are we at with answering the question? So far, remember the, the lady asked a question. She, she said, isn't the gospel and social justice the same thing? She says, I feel that they are. And that uh, the other side, as she put it, evangelicals, many evangelicals have said that, that, that that's akin to socialism. And so at this point, he's talking about politicians. Where, where are we going to get to actually addressing the definition of what the gospel says, what the gospel is in the Bible, uh, and looking critically at it and, and looking at it with a Berean heart and saying, what does the Bible say about the gospel? See, the, the issue is, ladies and gentlemen, is that there's really no interest in looking at the gospel. You're going to see see that as we continue. Uh, but what what does a politician do, someone that's duly elected? We, that's that's irrelevant to the uh, to the to the question. And it, it, it kind of sidesteps really looking critically and looking at whether there's validity and trying to equate the gospel with social justice. By their constituencies. And for this president to make their lives vulnerable, he's going to fool around and get one of these women killed. And the thing is, what he is doing is evil. Stop sugarcoating that, right? When you are making the lives of duly sworn citizens who are public servants vulnerable as a result of your rhetoric, that is a denunciation of their humanity, that is a renunciation of the best citizenship goals and aspirations of the nation, and that is unpatriotic and un-American, right? And it's morally polluted. What does that have to do with social justice and the gospel? Whether or not you like Trump, hate Trump, that's not the issue here. We, we need to get to the answer to the question. He, you see how he's using this question as a platform just to uh, promote his own perspective. And we really need to get to the question, the answer. Why? We're in a church. Allegedly, there are people in the audience, I, I would presume Christ, some Christians, and there's a Bible sitting on the podium there. Let's get to Scripture at some point, right? So here, here's newsflash. Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you say it, I'll deny it, but I'm a democratic socialist. Oh, wow. That's interesting. So how does he connect the dots for the gospel and social justice? Pull a personality out of his hat. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, big problem here. He's not my go-to for theology. He said a lot of troubling things. If you know things that in any of his writings, he said a lot of things that are troubling. He's not my go-to guy. And I think part of the issue we have to be concerned with is separating the personality from sound doctrine. Um, there's a bit of a conflation here because, yes, he was a uh, great civil rights leader. We have to, you know, look at it from that perspective, but we also have to look at it when it comes to what does the Bible say in regards to the gospel. He's not going to be my go-to guy. He's not going to be my go-to guy there because, like I said, there's a lot of things he said theologically that are troubling. And so what now Michael Eric Dyson's trying to do is in order to validate his perspective, he's got to pull out a national treasure. Who's going to say anything against Martin Luther King Jr.? Well, you got to put things in their proper categories. I'm The man is a man, but the man also had some faults, and the man also had some errors of theology that were not in lockstep with Scripture. 
And so you have to be honest about this and not treat him as an idol. And he's using MLK as a way to kind of boister his position because he doesn't really go to the Bible. He goes to a personality. That's dangerous. Don't ever go to a personality. Always search the scriptures to see if these things are so. Just like the Bereans. The greatest American who ever lived in my book. Democratic socialism for him meant let's do what the Bible said. <laughs> okay, what does that have to do with the gospel? Is, is not, and watch the next thing he says. Is this the gospel? The next thing that's going to come out of his mouth. He's already doing the setup, but let's see what happens next. Those who got, give to those who ain't. Those who possess, share with those who don't. And so at this point, what we see, he's pretty much did not even deny that it's socialism. He's, he's basically saying yes the, to, the, to the fears and to the complaint of those who fear that uh, social justice and the gospel equates to socialism. He said, he's basically admitting to it. Yes, it is socialism. Now, I know me saying that, there are going to be some that say, well, I don't agree. There might be some that say, I don't agree with uh, Michael Eric Dyson, his perspective, even though I believe that social justice and the gospel are relevant, they're connected, his conclusions I don't reach. But what this is the problem. I mean, he has the microphone. He's in a church building. Um, he goes on his lecture circuit. There are many that do agree with his perspective and are utilizing this type of reasoning in order to reach their conclusions. Now, watch what he's going to say here. He's already said in the Bible, he said, those who uh, have should give to those who don't. Now, does that mean by force or does that mean by their own volition voluntarily? Uh, I never saw anywhere in the Bible where someone was forced to give of their wealth to someone. And in fact, what you see in the Bible, it's always an act of someone's... Um, uh, compassion and love for their fellow man to want to do, but not out of any force to do something of that nature. Asking for a bigger cut of the pie, for better distribution of wealth, for, and by the way, that helps poor white and working class white brothers and sisters like it helps everybody else. So for me, I, I think at the end of the day, yes, do I believe in being strategic? I absolutely do. Can we find other words? Of course. Changing the word from socialism to another word doesn't change the, the goal and what you're trying to do and definitionally what uh, actions are being taken place. Changing the words and trying to sell the idea uh, doesn't change the outcome. So, you know, you can call socialism uh, redib redistribution of wealth. OK, it's still not good. And notice, we never got the gospel. We got some type of socialist plan, and everyone's clapping and just in awe of this, of the rhetoric and the words and the way he's handling language, but not looking at the fact that he has yet to show how the gospel and social justice are the same thing. Beyond socialists, we can. We can talk about welfare for all. Is that what Bernie read? Uh, or, or Medicare for all. Or you can speak of, you can describe. We don't need the commercial. We just want the product. Right? So we ain't got to do, right? We necessarily got to do that. But on the other hand, it's also a judgment of the previous occupant of that office who didn't necessarily do all he could have done to address the situation. Now, if you want to hear black people become like white Trumps of supporters talk about Obama. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this review. Um, like I said, I wanted to look at that question and um, look at that response that he gave. And it's interesting that I, I felt that the lady was like, I, I don't see it being socialism. He's, he pretty much said it is from his perspective. Um, and you know, she wanted an answer, I guess that would show that it wasn't socialism, but he pretty much, uh, went in the direction said, no, it, it, it is socialism. And, uh, from his perspective and th th there, there are big concerns. Anytime we add anything to the gospel message, 
dilute the gospel message, undermine the gospel message. And I know many feel like it's not undermining the gospel message to talk about uh, the ills in society and uh, people, their grievances. But here's the thing. We have to go to scripture. That has to be the final authority. And what has been problematic is when we when individuals have allowed external ideas and philosophies to underpin the gospel, saying, well, the gospel is not really the gospel unless you do X, Y, and Z. And that's really problematic. And 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 the point is, if if it wasn't the Bible, if the Bible supported it, that would be one thing, but the Bible doesn't support it. The Bible doesn't lay a framework that says that uh, we have, you know, meeting the felt needs of people is the gospel. The gospel is essentially about five things. And I'm going to just talk about this briefly, not going to go into any detail, but five things I want you to consider. This is the gospel. The gospel is about God. You have to have a right view of God in order to have an appreciation for the gospel. It's the gospel is about sin. Now, if you heard uh, Michael Eric Dyson's enumeration list, there was some there was some sin in there, and he kind of like downplayed it because oftentimes in church now we don't have a biblical view of sin anymore. Okay, the gospel is about Jesus Christ, the person and the work of Jesus Christ. The gospel is about repentance and faith. That's those are the essential cores of the gospel, right? What we become as creatures, new creatures in Christ Jesus, the works that we do are the byproducts of the saving work of the gospel. That's not the gospel. So we, we kind of conflate these ideas together. And it's so important that we don't have this conflation because now by having that conflation, essentially we're building a salvific system of salvation by works. You have to do something in order to get saved. And that's a problem. No matter what group of people you try to apply that to, it's a false gospel. So I hope you were edified by this video. More videos like this to come in the future. Please like, subscribe, share, comment. Um, Want to engage with you as I continue to make more video content. God bless.